Well, hello. Uh, good uh, Missions Monday to you, Pastor Howard Sloan, Westminster Biblical Missions, missionary at large. Uh, I haven't done a couple Monday videos in a while. Um, with everything going on in the world, I, I really didn't know what to say. But um, I'm taking a class tomorrow um, from the Crescent uh, Project. And uh, one of the books that I have to read is called Ambassadors to Muslims. It's by a man named Fouad Masri. And I wanted to read to you a, a section from his book um, that I think speaks well to the world we live in, uh, to the problems on the mission field that are you see, the problems that we have in this country, uh, no matter what you think the source of them are, no matter who you think is right, who you think is wrong, the problems are deeper than color of skin. Uh, the problems, well, let me read this story uh, to you. Um, in this story, uh, the author... Uh, is telling about one of these, uh, an encounter he had. He says, five years later, I had become involved in Christian ministry and was regularly sharing my faith in Christ with others. I was invited to a Christian conference in Korea, and when I arrived at the conference center in Seoul, I looked at the name of my assigned roommate and balked. Apparently, my spiritual maturity still left something to be desired. Elon sounded Jewish, very Jewish. The conference organizers had placed an Israeli and an Arab in the same room. What were they thinking? But Elon was a Jewish believer in Christ. He had called himself Messianic. Throughout the conference, I was surprised by his sincere faith and his diligence in following Christ and his teachings. Even more surprising. I found myself praying with him for our countries and responding to him with compassion. What more evidence did I need of Christ's complete 180 in my life? I was rooming with an Israeli and bore him no ill feelings, only brotherly love. When I asked Elon about the Christian community and those fellowships with Israel, within Israel, I expected him to describe a Messianic Jewish congregation. When he told me he worshipped in an Arab congregation, I was thrown off. Why? I asked. Why not? He responded. These are my brothers and sisters in faith. And here's the part I think that speaks to our day. Elon's answer made all the pieces come together. It dawned on me that the solution of the, to the ongoing Middle East crisis was forgiveness. A value shift from love to hate. Peace will come when Jesus Christ empowers a Palestinian to say to an Israeli, I forgive you. And an Israeli to a Palestinian, I forgive you. As long as Israelis raise their children to hate Palestinians and vice versa, peace will never reign in the Middle East. Until forgiveness is possible, peace is unattainable. I want to read that sentence again. Until forgiveness is possible, peace is unattainable. Sadly, the problem in the Middle East is not only political, it is mainly spiritual. Honestly, I think our problems in the United States are not political. They are not based in, in color of skin or politics. They are spiritual. I believe he's right. Until forgiveness is possible, peace is unattainable. And we who are in Jesus Christ who have had our sins completely, fully, utterly, and forever forgiven, until we who are forgiven much, forgive much, change is, is, isn't going to happen. Peace is unattainable until forgiveness is possible. And we will only learn to forgive when we've been forgiven much. The, the solution to much of these problems is forgiveness and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. 
Now, I, don't get me wrong, I know that there are a lot of other factors at play, but at the heart, no one's willing to forgive. People are holding grudges, hating, holding on to years of hostility. If we want peace in our land, it will come by preaching forgiveness and not just preaching forgiveness but by people knowing true forgiveness in Jesus Christ for when they have been forgiven much they will forgive much we become a country of hatred and you know what hatred takes a variety of forms I'll end with this. You know, when I go to Kenya and I look around, I couldn't tell you what tribe a person's from. I couldn't. Maybe if I knew the tribes based on geography, I could guess based on where I am, but in a, in a city, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But yet, tribalism, not Racism is the basis of what makes us, us, and them, them in Kenya. The truth is we will always find a way as human beings to make us, us, and them, them. But in Christ, there is no Jew or Gentile. There is no slave or free. We are all one in Jesus Christ. Christ, the gospel, must be the heart of any solution to destroying the hatred, the distrust that is in our world. Because we're not the only country who faces it. Every country in the world faces it. Until next time, Pastor Howard Sloan, Missionary at Large, Westminster Biblical Missions. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this broadcast, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're interested in following what I'm doing, you can go to missionaryatlarge.webs.com. You can also find me on Facebook or YouTube, Howard Sloan, dash missionary at large, if you haven't found me there already. If you're interested in supporting the ministry, please go to wbminc.org slash donate. You can also find out more about Westminster Biblical Missions there. While you're there, you can go to that donate page and go to the Missionary at Large Fund. Thank you again. We'll see you next time.